Probably the thing that surprised me the most at the Reclaim Australia rally was just how white everyone was on both sides and the police. Sure, there were those of other races there, but not that many. It was the whitest crowd I have been a member of in many years, easily. It reinforced an idea that I had read and had at first not given much thought to, but it wouldn't go away. This article talked about how we were engaged in a white civil war, that nearly every conflict within society is between whites and other whites. So much makes sense when you view it like that. The left always accuses us of being racist, but the truth is that we rarely think in racial terms. We are proud of our heritage, but we are more proud of our nationality than of our race. But think on this. Every political philosophy was invented by a white man. Every one. Communism, socialism, anarchism, libertarianism, liberalism, democracy, fascism, Nazism, conservatism, even traditionalism. The one possible exception is feminism, and that has a lot more male influence than anyone cares to admit. Although, even if you accept that it is a wholly female philosophy, it was still invented by whites. Now, there's quite a variety of ideas in there. For a point of difference, look at one of the greatest and oldest civilizations, China. China has thousands of years of history, of culture and civilization. Many inventions came from China, and some of the world's great philosophies also come from China. But when you look at the last two centuries, it becomes clear that the only answer China had for dealing with the West was to adopt Western political philosophies. Republicanism was an introduced political philosophy. So was democracy and nationalism, as was communism. None of these ideas came from China. In fact, they are all completely contradictory to all of Chinese history. All of these political philosophies, with one exception, is utopian. They all believe that it is possible to create a perfect world filled with perfect people. This idea comes from the Bible from the idea that there will be an end time, an end to history and the creation of a perfect world when Jesus returns. These political philosophies, of course, believe not in a religious end time, but in a political end time, whereby their philosophy will have created that perfect world filled with perfect people. Ironically, the one political philosophy that rejects that is traditionalism. But once you have accepted the idea that the world is perfectible, then you're playing for very high stakes, for the very soul, that is, the very secular soul of man. So what does all this have to do with a white civil war? Liberalism believes in its secular end time, in the ability of both society and the individual to be perfectible, but to achieve that, it must destroy those things that stop that perfectibility from happening. The family and the nation must be destroyed to create this perfect world. And the best liberals are white. So are the best communists, socialists, anarchists, libertarians, democrats, fascists, Nazis, feminists and conservatives. And traditionalists. These ideas are all indigenous to Western civilization, the civilization of whites. They understand what they mean better than anyone else because they grow up with the underlying assumptions that underpin these political philosophies. You'll learn your grandmother's recipe better if she teaches you in her own kitchen than from a written recipe after she has died. The same applies here. But there is another aspect that has a deep influence upon this white civil war. People like to feel superior to others. It may not be nice, but it is natural. And as whites lose their social cohesion, they can regain a sense of that by adopting a political philosophy. Instead of being proud of your race or ethnic group, instead of being proud of your nationality or of your social class, you can show your superiority to others by supporting causes. The easiest way is to join whoever is shouting the loudest or who sounds the nicest. Gay marriage, refugees, diversity, doesn't matter what it is, all that really matters is that you have joined a tribe and that you are superior to the other tribes. The interesting thing is that it helps explain why so many whites support anti-white policies because people of colour are weapons, not people. 
just as the white working class was used as a weapon. These people exist not as someone to support, but as a way of showing what tribe you belong to and to show how superior you are compared to others. So when a liberal supports a policy and it fails, that's all right, because it wasn't really there to help. It was there to prove that you belong to the liberal tribe and that it won and that proves you're superior. Sadly, this idea that being superior of always being right has for many become the all-consuming passion within liberalism. Liberalism once believed in its aims. Far too many are happy not to prove how much better they are than thee. It is only by defeating whites that we can advance our cause. No other race understands the underlying assumptions that give our rival political philosophy strength. No other race understands our civilization because it's ours. Whites are the problem and whites are the answer.